What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I have my wife's cart back in the shop. And we need to, I got like a little punch list I need to do to the cart here. Number one, I need to get this right here. Mic tuning, eight gang, switch panel, uh, switch panel mounted. Probably gonna mount it right there. I have a volume knob. We're gonna put on the pile amp. Remember, this one has a pile amp behind the dash that the CarPlay, our copyright screen, this is for motorcycles. This right here is running into that little amplifier. Well, the amplifier needs a volume knob in order to uh, turn the volume up and down. So we need to do that. We also need to adjust the brakes on here because the brakes are too tight on both sides of the rear. When I was building this cart, I put a Chinese M core in it and I have an OEM M core that I'm gonna put in here as well. Really get it ready for summer 2024. That's some things we're gonna do to this cart on today's video. Not really like a main thing, but just a couple small things we need to do to it. I thought about ordering some LED lights put underneath the bottom of it. I thought about making her some wheel lights for it. Not exactly sure just yet. If you're first time seeing this one, this right here is running the Uno lithium ion batteries, which they don't make those anymore. The company has pretty much quit. I have the battery there, which is a 90 amp hour battery. It has an onboard charger, has your 400 amp solenoid. It has the Silver Wolf T-Con controller, which is the orange controller. I put a 12 volt battery in here as well with the mic tuning system. And over here we have a NOCO. This is a 10 amp charger, onboard charger for the 12 volt battery. So I have both chargers on board. And then down here, we did the NOCO GCP1 or the NOCO GCP2. We'll plug just an extension cord in there and it charges both batteries at the same time on this little cart and there's some more room over there i left that there for like storage purposes say if we go to the beach or whatever she can put towels in there or whatever so i never did anything with this gaping hole in the back the club car has those covers that you can put in place never done anything with that would like to maybe do something with it but i haven't done anything with it just yet but yep, there it is. It's got some Hyanka speakers on it, Marine speakers or LE speakers. It's got the Carpy Ride system on there with the CarPlay, a little amp in the dash or behind the dash. It's got your uh, Fleet QI, um, you know, key switch on there. You got a USB driver there to charge things up with. So uh, it's a good little cart for her. We took it on vacation last year and Notice this right here, once we got back home, somebody had ran up beside us or something or rubbed on something and kind of scratched it up, but things are bound to happen. So I would rather have something drive it than have something really pretty that sits in the garage and never gets used, so. All right, so one of the reasons I'm replacing the M-Core, it's got a Chinese M-Core in it. Let's say you're backing up or going forward and you're just creeping and then you let off the throttle just a little bit, but then you get back on the throttle. It's like you have a dead pedal. The golf cart won't do anything. Let's see if we can replicate it here on video. There we go. I'm pressing the throttle all the way down. Golf cart's not doing anything. I need to let off the pedal, put back on the pedal and now it'll go again. That's exactly why I think the Chinese M-Core is uh, my problem. Here we go. Forward. Not do anything. That off the pedal. Get back on it. It'll go. So this is not being held on. We can remove it. It's down here. We can bring it above all of this. We need to remove this right here pedal group. I put some self tappers in here when I built this cart because this cart, I bought it in a thousand pieces for a hundred bucks. Uh, 
And that is the other M core there, if you can see it or not. So they really try to get you with the yellow stickers on the China imports, uh, or M cores, I mean. And I'm not saying I don't ever not run these because I've ran them in the past and they're cheap. But if it's a cart that I'm gonna build for myself or whatever, the M core four, the OEM one is the preferred method. I've had this one now six months for this cart. Just haven't put it on there. It's been kind of chilly here and wife don't ride their golf cart like that. So now it's starting to warm up. So we're getting rid of this one and putting this one in. All right, got the new M core in place. I didn't show everything. If you're new to the channel and you're curious why I didn't show that, well, I have a dedicated video just to replace an M core on a club car present. And I'll link that at the end of this video here. All right, so let's go ahead and check the, the new M core here in the garage. We'll check it later on riding down the road or whatever. Um, see what it was doing. I can already, I can already hear the um, the little micro switch inside of this M core clicking and you really couldn't hear it in the other one. So I think the next order of business is to install this volume knob here. And it's made by Pow. This little golf cart has a Pow Bluetooth Marine amp behind the dash, powering both of these two uh, six inch Marine speakers. The speakers are made by Hyanka and they have LED lights in them. I have them turned off right now. Um, there they are, they're turned on. They do different colors. Anyway, so this is not really, not really a radio. This is what you call a Carpy Ride wireless car play add-on screen. So if you have a motorcycle, you wanted wireless car play while you're riding down the road, it came with like a handlebar mount. I have a full full review video on this right here unit. It's completely waterproof. It plays uh, Android Auto wirelessly or CarPlay wirelessly. Um, it's, you can turn the display on and off. It's got regular Bluetooth. You can uh, go Bluetooth transmitting from here to like a radio if you wanted to, but I just hooked this up to a PAL marine amplifier and the problem is you know at the time i was thinking well we can turn the volume up and down here but you have to get out of car play to go turn the volume up and down before you get back in car play now it's not meant really to turn the volume up and down on because it's meant to hook to your existing stereo on your motorcycle or your headphones on your motorcycle to be honest which is what this one's made for but since we're using it with a pile amp I'm thinking now, let's go ahead and install the external um, switch there, you know, volume switch. So I talked to my wife last night and said, Mama, where do you want this stuff at? And she said she don't want it interfering with the cup holder. She don't want it interfering with the pocket down here. She says this right here is much useless here. So she said if we can just drill a hole into here, uh, sit it down flush in there, run that to the back, she would be happy. So that's what we're going to do is install that little volume knob right in here and that's what we're gonna do next um, I've never hated disassembling a president more than I hate this one because when I was building my wife's cart this one I didn't want to build her a regular cart and she picked this color out it's like a I think it's like a Volvo blue I can't remember the exact color name but I had my cousin which paints my carts. I had him smooth all of the textured plastic pieces and paint those as well. I don't want to scratch anything up. I was thinking it needs to come off. All right, got dash off. All these wires are going up behind the dash. Some's going to the carpy ride. Some's going to the fleet QI. Some's going to the, um, like this right here is connected with the headlight system. And to the amp and that little box right there is to control the lights, the RGB lights on the speakers. But we're gonna hook this little remote knob up to the power real quick. This little marine amp. And um, hook it up there and make sure everything works before we I mounted on the cart. So one of the cool features about the carpy ride system is they got like an EQ, you got like a loud button, it's got different uh, setups, 
I've just left mine on custom and just all flat across it. Um, but say you were listening to music, okay, and you wanted to get out, you have to get a car home. Once you got the car home, you go over here, hit the volume button. Then you would have to adjust it up and down. So if you wanted to, you could just leave this, say, I don't know, about 30 or whatever. It don't matter. You could turn it all the way up if you wanted to. But then with the remote here, the remote's going to adjust the output of the amplifier. So um, I wouldn't say these PAL remotes are accurate. It's got a long uh, throw on there. Like right now, it's all the way off. And this right here is all the way wide open. But it generally works on the piles to about right there. And then everything else from there to wide open is just dead space. So uh, not a bad system. Uh, not a high-end stereo system, I would say, at all. Um, but for this cart, it will suit it just fine. All right, so I got the hole drilled. That's what the hole looks like there. This fits in there pretty well. I got some small screws here. I'm going to place in there to hold it in there. I know the lighting is bad, but I have this right here. I think this came from one of the taillight kits for the President, this whole saw bit here uh, to open the, the back body up. I just use that. All right, so that little modification looks a lot better. It's right here. And it's out of the way, so in case she wanted to put change or something in there, she can. But that was the spot that she wanted, so I said, whatever mama wants, mama gets, pretty much. So this right here thing I'm thinking about doing is mounting this to the cart. Now, I want to mount it right here. I can run the wire at the bottom of it and drill a hole into the plastic here where we mount it down, and then... It, it, it's just a clean look. You don't see no wire. So I, I definitely want to do that. Um, the problem is mounting it, they only got some very, very fine screws here. Okay, and I've them threw the box away so I don't have the hardware to mount it. And I'd like to mount it maybe with some double-sided tape. The only problem with that is this is textured. So I was thinking about breaking out the small laser diode machine making us a little adapter plate that we can actually screw into here and then double side tape this right here to the adapter plate. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Now yesterday while we was working on the cart, these were being cut out. These are the NOCO GCP1 adapters for like a easy go golf cart. So you would take your stock receptacle out Put this in place, it would just bolt into the uh, EasyGo body. Then the NoCo GCP1 would bolt into here. I need to find a spot or a website or something to start selling these to you guys because I've just been making them here and there for different people. Maybe make an eBay link or something and give you guys that. But like right now, I have six of these in my possession. Um, I think I'm about to cut this right here, a little um, switch plate adapter. Out of the same material, I have some more of this right here stuff, which is like, a, I think it's like an eighth of an inch. All right, so let's see if we can make something. Uh, this right here is two and seven eighths by five. All right, got my design right here. We're going to go ahead and cut it out of wood first. Once we get the wood uh, cut out and test fit, then we'll cut it out of the acrylic. So this right here is what it's going to look like. I think I think that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm getting a measurement of 29 inches from that edge there to this edge right here on the body. But if you look at the seats, this right here is level. And that does not look good. So I'm thinking I'm going to just say screw the measurement there and base it off of the seats here. Um, I don't know, this seat up here, it looks to be about right, that down there, but this doesn't. So maybe I can adjust the seat cover as well so we don't throw this right here off with our eyes and just leave this right here at 14 and a half to that center right there. 
See what I'm saying? I think that is where it needs to be. That matches there. And then the seat down here, we guess we need to go ahead and shift this right here over some. All right, when I ain't got the seat off, I got my hole marked. It's in the center, so we're gonna run with that. I'm gonna use this hole saw bit again to uh, drill this right here out. Okay, that's good. I thought I had some good double-sided tape, some 3M tape. Uh, it must have grew legs and ran away. So I got some of this other, like general purpose, double-sided tape. I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now we need to go fishing for some wires. I got some aluminum wire here. And yeah, I've had this stuff for a long time. And I like the aluminum wire because it's easy to bend and shape. Like that. Slide it down here. It looks pretty good there. I really can't see it. Uh, turn it on. Everything works. Good deal. So that's done as well. So I just took a break and I was getting some lunch and I was just in the garage, just fiddling in the main garage and I ran across this box here. I said, well, it's a rearview mirror. Now, I do not know what I ordered this for. I think I ordered it for the, the president, the, the one that we usually do all the range tests with. Um, but mama needs a rear view mirror and I like the fact that it's not, uh, it's not, you know, real long. It's, it's not one of those five panel, six panel mirrors. So we're gonna try to put this on as well. I wasn't planning on doing this, but it needs a mirror. Once those two pieces are together there, that determines how tight this right here ball is there. Went ahead and screwed it into the back of the mirror. All right, so I bolted the bracket on, put it in the vise, bent it over. Got me a bolt going in there. I'm gonna slide it to a triple track and bolt it in place. So that rear view mirror is done. I think it looks pretty good. Just bolted up like that. One bolt going in there. Probably could cut that bracket off a little bit, but that's all right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is jack the rear of the cart up. I'm gonna take the wheels and all off. And I'm gonna loosen up the, or tighten in the adjusters just a little bit so it will uh, not spread the brake shoes out as much. I think that's the problem now, the brake shoes are out too much and it's causing friction on the drums. So I'm gonna just uh, tighten the adjusters in just a little bit and stick it all back together and we should be done. So you can see the adjuster here. I'm sorry, the camera's shaking. That's the adjuster, you see the one side of them little spikes is flat, the other side is at an angle. So if you wanted to tighten up the brakes, the only thing you need is a flat head, take it off, put a flat head against the adjuster and push towards the inside. And what that's doing is that's spreading the brakes apart. Now say you wanted to uh, tighten the brakes up. Well, I'm putting it in here. There's the little, see, I'm lifting that little lever up there. Once you lift the lever up, you can actually take and just pull in the brakes like this right here. It's better to do it with two hands, but I'm trying to record as well. So that's how to loosen and then that's how to tighten as well. So if that could help somebody, I want to throw that in this video as well. Now to the best of my ability, I've always been told you want to put the drum onto the, um, the axle and you want to be able to turn it by hand 
but at the same time you want to be able to hear a little bit of friction between the shoes and the uh, and the drum itself now when we went to take everything off i couldn't even turn it by hand and the part brake wasn't even on so it lets me know there that it was too tight to begin with so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side but i'm gonna just tighten and loosen tighten and loosen probably put the the drum on a few you know a hundred thousand times you know and uh, try to get the brakes just right so they're not too tight but they're not loose at the same time so i took the cart for a ride went to one cul-de-sac and um turned around and out when hit the brakes brakes felt good cranked down on the cart down a long straight away got it about 31 32 and 48 volts this little silver wolf tecon it does not produce the low end torque that the navitas does but man it has mid-range power and it's it's speedy it's a little bit quicker than the navitas setup on 48 volts Anyways, I had it on an LSV mode. I didn't have it on full tilt. And um, like I said, 31, 32. Got around to one corner, hit the brakes again, started to slow down. I said, all right, I, I finally got this thing dialed in just the way I want it. I went to turn around and the pedal was dead. I say, this M core that we just replaced, it cannot be, you know, it, it can't be bad. It's a brand new M core. I said, they can't be bad. Lift the seat up. Looked at the uh, the fleet IQ. There's no power on. Strange. So, thank goodness the brakes are working because I was able to push it probably about a half a mile back. And uh, it rolled freely, just like easily. You know, if those brakes were still bad, I would have struggled getting it back wasn't bad it rolled easily so got it back in here and started looking at some things the battery's off the charger won't power on so last night when i plugged everything up the only thing that was charging was a 12 volt battery now the 48 volt battery is dead pulled the app up the uno app nothing uh, it, it recognizes my account, but it will not recognize the battery or connect to the battery. Something that's like a BMS fault. Well, they went out of business last year. Uno did. And um, the website's down. The YouTube channel's down. All the contact information is down. The only Uno advertisements are like YouTube videos or advertisements from businesses. So now, like, what do we do? Here's the, the aggravating part of this is, number one, I had it on my channel. It did great for so long. Nobody, there's nobody to contact. There's no warranty left on it. You know, the company went under, so there's no warranty. So I contacted the parent company, which is Titan Batteries. They won't answer their phones. You got to leave a message. Oh, and so I called back like four or five different times and I hit every, uh, like I hit one, I hit two, I hit three, I hit four, you know, and just to see if I could get somebody. Everyone says you have to leave a message. So that's no good. I guess to the flip side of this is yes, I could be aggravated about this right here, but I'm not because I had to push that cart back and the wheel spun freely. I wasn't like, you know, working my legs out or anything. Um, it, it's upsetting that this battery is just no good now. The battery will not power on. There's no buttons on the battery or nothing. And another aggravating part is when I built this cart, I put the battery on where I wanted to, and I, I took, you know, I put the battery, the charger, the 12 volt battery, the 12 volt charger, the controller, everything is built into the driver's side compartment. Now I'm going to have to rearrange some things and move some things over. I guess it's not bad. Um, I'm not upset. It's just one of the things that, that goes on. You know, you get two or three or four things accomplished. We got to go back one or two steps. So it's the whole, you know, one step forward, two step back game. I've, I've played that game, I felt like, a lot in my life. Oh, well. You know, I could sit here and be pissed off about it. And be aggravated 
Or I can say, you know what? I'm going to take a break tomorrow. Let's grab it and growl and uh, change some more things up on it. There's some more things on this golf cart that we're going to do. Uh, in another video coming up, we're going to, I'm going to fix the roof. It's got one of these triple track roofs on it. I love the roof. The only problem with these roofs are they rattle. And at first I thought it was the connection between the posts and the top, but it's not. It's they, they have rivets going between the plastic top and the aluminum channels. And the rivets go bad, or they get loose over time. And when they get loose, they can start to rattle. And that will drive someone insane. Well, it'll drive me insane. So that's number, that's number two. Number three is, I have a subwoofer for this cart. I hope I also have enough room. But I'm probably going to put the subwoofer in here on another video. Um, I might stick this Vatra 48 volt battery in here. I don't know. We'll see. But who knows? This is what working on carts is like. This is what, this is just life in general, man. Like I'm, I'm really not upset at all. Uh, you know, we got, it was like four o'clock right now. We got some things we got to do tonight. I'm about to call it. If I can just get this charger undone from out this battery compartment, I done, I done pulled the battery out. If I can just pull this battery charger out, and the way I put it in there is I overdid everything when I you know put it in there. So I used four uh, or three uh, bolts and nuts, and one of them you really can't get to. I don't know why in the world I thought I it needed three in there when it's just you know just a piece of just a just a charger connected, just you know just overdoing things. Now is when I regret doing that kind of stuff. Anyways, this video is getting kind of long. I appreciate you watching today's video. We got a lot accomplished. Even though, you know, we've had this mishap at the very end, that's all right. We're going to keep plugging away. We're going to do something else about this right here. We're going to put some, another battery in here. We might have to change this whole card up maybe tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. I appreciate you guys watching today's video. Until next time, we'll see you later. But it ain't over. It ain't over at all. We're not going to let this right here whoop us. So we just got some more work to do. Until then, we'll see y'all later. That's the battery. It's usually blinking at the top. Well, it's not blinking at all now. And it was fully charged the other night. I don't know. It's like the BMS in it just shut down. And um, let's see. If I can show you the charger, see the charger here, the Uno charger. I had the Uno battery here, Uno charger, 12 volt battery, the mic tuning system, controller, solenoid, the NOCO was for this 12 volt battery here. I don't know, it's always something, but you see how I was kind of having everything to one side here? I'm gonna have to move some stuff over. We'll get it, we're not gonna let it whoop us.